Okay, now it's time to know your news and recognize the left versus the right. What? Yeah, let's do it. So we want to study and understand and comprehend the entire world. But how? There's so much going on with complex events uh, unfolding and happening all over the world every second of the day, day to day, in new and different ways. We aren't omnipotent. We can't be everywhere at once to personally experience and interpret the truth of every situation in the world. So how do we do it? Answer, we rely on information presented to us from others. Others? Others like who? Others like uh, books? Textbooks, magazines, newspapers, news reporters, news shows, a radio talk shows, a radio talk show host, political and economic analysts, teachers, college professors, fellow world travelers, family, friends, tweets, IMs, blogs, Facebooking. Whew, there's a whole lot out there. And all of these shows, publications, stories, sources of information are produced by People, people like me and you, uh, people that have different opinions and different viewpoints about the world. And thus they all, to a greater or lesser extent, have some sort of bias about what they're telling you or not telling you, by the way. Uh, it's not bad or good, it's just the way it is. We're humans, that's how we do it. For our world exploration, it is important to recognize these differences, different takes, different biases that exist when reporters are reporting on news events, when politicians are debating solutions to societal problems, or when anybody expresses personal beliefs in interpreting a situation of something that's unfolding. You need to understand where they're coming from so that you can decide for yourself where the truth lies. Okay, so what are these biases or major ideological approaches to problem-solving reporting events and understanding our world? Obviously, there are two major camps of thought here. The liberal left versus the conservative right. And of course, there's a great spectrum of opinion across these two major ideologies, from extreme, extreme, extreme far left to extreme, extreme, extreme far right. There's lots of stuff in between in the middle. They may be in great opposition, but most folks are somewhere closer to the middle. Maybe just center left on this issue, they just center right on this issue, and some people are dead in the center altogether. They're called centrist, and they use ideas from, say, both camps to form opinions and solve problems on an issue-to-issue -issue basis. Now, you've heard these names uh, and labels thrown around all the time in the news and the radio and everywhere else. Uh, mostly a lot of name calling in this country. Uh, you heard of a leftist guerrilla group in Colombia uh, or in politics in America. All oh, those right wing nuts who are saying that the president's a leftist pinko commie slipping the country into leftist socialism. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. But let's get to the root of these issues, the root of this, these names. What are these approaches all about? And to do that, let's, let's actually take a look right at the names right off the get-go. What these words mean. And we'll start with the conservative right. Just look at the root of the word itself. We on the conservative right like to conserve. That is, to keep the same. Conserve tradition. Conserve political power. Conserve economic power in the hands of those that already possess it. We're all about the old school and the old ways. Let's keep it the same. And then what about the liberal left? On the liberal left, we want to liberate or free everything. To free ourselves from static tradition by incorporating current perspectives and new knowledge to change the old ways. And free economic and political power up for everyone to share. Free, liberate, we. And what is their kind of life take on how things ought to be? The conservative right hankers back to the good old days when everything was simpler and better. We want to maintain those traditions of our forefathers and apply them and duplicate them in today's world. 
the liberal left thinks that maybe the good old days actually weren't all that good. And even if they were good for you, or are good for you now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good for everybody in the society. Lots of others may not have it so good. And there are new realities, new information, new technologies that should be incorporated as we change our world for the better. At least we want to try to. And faced with a debate about the shaping of government policy, or interpreting a news event, or offering solutions to problems, how would they solve it? Where would these two ideological approaches go for answers or for guidance? We look to the historical text and ancient documents to answer questions even in today's world. The Jewish Talmud, the Christian Bible, the Muslim Quran, Vedic texts in the caste system of ancient India, ancient Confucian thought in China still applied in today's world, and of course the constitutions of the states themselves, the founding documents. They reinforce tradition of the old ways. The answers are all there. They can still be applied to today's world. We would incorporate new scientific knowledge, uh, sociology, psychology, biology, technology, new facts and new ways of understanding our world that make for new realities. Today's world is so much different than it was in the past, even a hundred years ago. We must have new, fresh solutions to what's happening today. We must change things to make them better. We embrace change. Change is good. No, 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 boo! Change is bad! Now, these broad ideological approaches can be applied to a host of different topics, like economics, finance, even personal finance, politics, government systems, religion, social issues. But at their core, they do have certain distinctions which set them at odds with each other. What distinctions am I talking about? Guys, you tell them, right? We on the conservative right are all about preserving that tradition preserving societal structure, and preserving societal stability over all other things. That's our number one priority, stability. In that respect, we support a strong central government in its capacity to maintain that order, meaning we are pro-military, pro-police, pro-law and order. We're also pro-big business because it's the businesses that build the economy which bring wealth and prosperity and therefore stability to the society. We are also pro-religion in all facets of private but also public life as religion provides structure and order and rules for our ethical and moral lives and establish the proper family values for us to follow. So we're pro-military, pro-police, pro-establishment, pro-law and order. We are the establishment. And that's typically why, typically why you associate overtly religious people with the conservative right, or richer folks who want to conserve their wealth, or older folks who want to conserve the traditions of the way they grew up, but also uh, police uh, and the military, etc., etc. And on the other side of the aisle, we on the liberal left respect the rights and liberties of the individual in society above all other things. The individual should be totally liberated in such a way as to make the most out of his or her individual existence in the best way they see fit for their lives. And we use the experiences of the modern world and the modern knowledge and modern interpretation of things to change and shape the world of today, which is why we are all about pro-individualism, pro-choice, pro-equality, equal rights, equal pay, universal suffrage. Uh, that's the right for everyone in the society to vote for their government that's going to rule them. Uh, therefore, uh, everyone has a voice. And we favor a strong central government that uses its power to make all these things equal politically and economically for all of its citizens, which is why we also support things like public education, social programs like welfare or unemployment insurance, because what good is political freedom if economically you have no power at all? We are also pro-labor. We like to stick up for the individual workers and their rights, and thus we're kind of anti-big business. And even anti-big government when either one of those entities becomes too intrusive on the rights of the individuals. individuals freedoms trump political, government, or economic power. Individuals first. So we're kind of 
anti-establishment, uh, anti-corporate, anti-the man, uh, when the man gets too powerful or oppressive, pro-individual expression, pro-equal rights, pro-economic and political equality for all, which is why we normally associate the left with poorer folks, oppressed peoples, minorities, actors, artist types who are expressing themselves any way they want, peacemongers, environmentalists, hippies, young individualistic college students who want to go out and change the world, and even overeducated liberal college professors. What? No, man, I'm a centrist. I think you see how these differences in approach can quickly polarize any debate, especially when the extremes of these approaches come out to play, as easily evidenced in the manifestations of the far right versus the far left folks in the world like dirty damn hippies living in a commune, a commune like communism, country clubber elitist. They want to redistribute my wealth to pass it around to the poor masses who don't work. Corporate fat cats hoarding the wealth. Dope smoking heathens. Fundamentalist religious nuts and zealots. Those left-wing nuts are revolutionaries intent on overthrowing the government and or the police. Pillagers of the planet. Slippery socialists sliding into communism. Polluters. Flag burning. Ultra conservative fundamentalist freaks. Anti-law and establishment anarchists. They're suppressing my individual freedoms and expressions. Tree hugging fascist. Bunny kissing environmentalists that are damaging the economy. White collar oppressors. Oh, God. Fellas, chill it out. Uh, those are certainly the extreme fringe of both sides. But not everybody's on the fringe. In fact, not many are on the fringe. Most are somewhere closer to the middle of this spectrum of belief. We can see these ideologies at work in tangible ways in everyday life and decision making too. Uh, some examples from across the board may help here. Uh, for example, uh, religiously the left versus the right. How do you guys feel about having, I don't know, a woman as a priest in your church, especially you Catholics and Jewish folks and Muslims? How do you feel about women as priests? Nope, 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 nope. Not part of the traditional ways in any of the religious text. There's always been a role for a man. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it should be. They wrote the stuff a long time ago. It still applies in today's world. No women priests. Certainly we would support that. Times have changed in the last couple thousand years. We now accept women as equals in our society. So why wouldn't they have the opportunity to hold a leadership position in a religion? They are just as pious and just as competent as their male counterparts. If a religion were to do that, we would call them a reformist or reform religion. Or economically, should your government place big taxes on businesses or heavily regulate multinational corporations? No, 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 no. Get the government out of the way of the business. As soon as government gets involved, they're screwing with business, they're gonna mess things up, it's gonna damage the economy. No go, don't tax them, don't mess with them, don't regulate them. Absolutely yes, we would support that. Big corporations have way too much power over the individuals that work for them and way too much power in society at large. They need to give back to the society in terms of high taxes. And without government regulations, Companies and corporations would totally screw over their employees, pay them pennies on the dollar, have unsafe working conditions, and would openly pollute the environment. They need to be regulated. Or politically, would you favor a change to your country's constitution? Absolutely not! That is the founding documents written by the founding fathers their gold standard, man. Don't mess with the Founding Fathers or their words. They wrote it a long time ago. It was awesome then. It's still awesome now. Jefferson rocks. Don't mess. Yes, again, new times, new problems call for new solutions, which sometimes means that even the great constitution of our country needs to be tweaked from time to time as circumstances and societies and attitudes change. And let's make it real for the Americans viewing this. How do each of you feel about 
let's say, the Patriot Act passed during the Bush administration, which allowed for government spying on its own citizens so that they could root out, find, and destroy terrorists in the society. But of course, uh, in times of war or disaster or threats to the country, the individuals must relinquish some of their individual human rights and privileges to the big government so that the government can have the power to stabilize and protect us and keep us safe. With no questions, not a problem. No, 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 bad, 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 bad government intruding into individuals' lives and taking away individual liberties. That's a very slippery slope when a government starts invading individuals' personal lives in the name of national security. That's how dictatorships start. <laughs> and socially speaking, seriously, how do you guys feel about gay marriage? Oh, no way! Uh, no historic text, no religious text says that that stuff is okay. That's against tradition. It's against family values in the traditional family sense. Absolutely not. It'd be the end of days, Sodom and Gomorrah. Hell yeah! Individuals making choices about their own lives in these new and modern times. Yes! Pro-choice, baby. Have an abortion. Legalize marijuana. Get married to whoever you want. Be as gay as you want to be. <laughs> I knew that last one was a loaded question, but I brought up those particular political social issues in the United States to make a very important point that you need to understand in order to get the outside, exterior, rest of the planet world. And that is this asterisk, 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 virtually all distinctions between the left versus the right in the United States is based on social issues. Almost all of it is based on social issues. Issues like gay rights, prayer in school, abortion, uh, tax rates, gun control. Those are all social issues that divide the United States and polarize the United States, sometimes terribly so. But this is not the case for the broader spectrum of left versus right in the world. The world that we're going to be talking about all semester, where the political left versus the right on the global stage means the difference between ultra-concentrated power uh, on the right, which would form a fascist or Nazi state, versus an ultra-liberal distribution of political power, which would be something closer to democracy or communism. That's a big difference. Do you get that? Or even economically. Uh, the left versus right economically in the world means the difference between on the right, wide open, free market, no rules or regulations capitalism versus a full on socialism bleeding into communism. That's some significant big difference on the global stage. Maybe if we put up this chart, it can make it more real for you to understand the difference between the US and the world. If we were looking at the entire spectrum of ideological thought across the planet, Look at the extremes. On the extreme left, you'd have anarchists who want no government at all, power at all to the people. Or a dirty hippies living in communes. And of course, the communes means they want to be communist or revolutionary leftist guerrillas who want to overthrow the government. Versus on the extreme right, Nazis, religious fanatics, military dictatorships, right-wing fundamentalist nutbags. Those are the extremes of the spectrum. But if you like, drew a line right down the middle. You were a centrist here on the world stage. You'd see that as you went a little to the left and progressed leftward from center, you'd see that the real focus here is on more individualism, uh, more power to the individuals, and more so the further left you go, uh, more freedoms, more freeness to the peoples, less control by an overarching big government or multinational corporation. And if you were to progress from center to the right, you'd see that just to the right of center would be a little less focus on individualism as your primary concern, a little less free, a little less freedoms, more and more and more control as you progress further and further right to full-on Nazi power. Now, if we were to superimpose the ideological differences here in the United States onto this, let's say the liberal Democrats versus the conservative Republicans. Here's where they would fall out on the world stage. Kablamo, kablamo. Yeah, that's right. 
They're right beside each other on the world stage. There's not a dime's worth of difference between these two groups ideologically, except for those social issues, which they bicker about incessantly and rant and rage and scream at each other and act like it's the end of the world. And oh my gosh, we can never get together and the country's going to die if the other group's in charge. Whoa, chill it out. They're just center right and center left in the bigger picture. Neither the Republicans or Democrats, nor leftists or rightists in America are seriously arguing for a move to communism or Nazism. It's simply not the case. They are debating about social issues almost exclusively in the U.S. Don't mistake that for when you hear those terms on the global stage. Okay? Okay. Whew. So, we see these big differences in approach to understanding our world. So who's got it right? <laughs> Who wins? Well, that's for up to you to decide. Uh, but here's the real deal, the Boyer deal. Um, both. Both ideological lines of thought are valuable tools for understanding issues and shaping policies which affect our world. How so? Well, let's defend them one at a time. Uh, what's so great about the conservative right or conservatism in general? Well, not all change is good. Not all ideas are great. Not all new ideas are going to work. I mean, look at the idiots that thought liberal slash equalizing communism was going to be a great new forward for humanity and reshape planet Earth. What a disaster that was. Oops, our bad on that one. There is something to be said for tried and true tested systems that have worked over time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And tradition is a big component of culture, of self-identity, of stability of society. And is anybody going to argue that's a bad thing? Amen, brother! The right rocks! Okay, so what's so great about liberalism over on the left? Well, uh, let's face it, some old traditions totally suck ass. Uh, to conserve tradition blindly just because it's the way your great-great-great-great-granddaddy did it uh, is not always a good thing. Uh, without liberal thought and action, uh, you would still have, say, human sacrifice in ancient Greek society or Aztec society. Uh, you'd still have kings and queens on the thrones across Europe. Uh, and you would still have the slave trade. I mean, that was a tradition for thousands of years of human history. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that one. Liberal thought and liberal change brought about abolition of slavery, uh, but also scientific revolutions, political revolutions of all stripes, uh, like the American one, uh, equal rights, religious freedoms, etc., etc. Who can argue those are bad things? Freedom! Revolution! Power to the people, baby! And tradition often falls flat in the face of modern knowledge, modern technologies, and complexities of modern life. Where in the Bible or the Quran or Confucian thought does it tell people how to deal with handguns or with nuclear weapons, with multinational corporations, or with genetic cloning? Uh, let's face it, they don't. Uh, we have to incorporate new information to develop new solutions to new problems. That's change. That's liberal thought. You kind of got to have it. Yay! That's what I've been saying, suckers! So, these opposing viewpoints actually serve to balance each other in every society, making for a nice yin and yang effect, uh, inciting passionate debates and preserving stability in the society while allowing for incremental change too. Yes, you need to preserve some of the old ways, but yes, you also have to have some new changes that incorporate new thinking. Oh, I can dig that. Well, yeah, I can see that too. I like to look at it like this. The conservative right lives in the pragmatic, practical, real world of now when they try to figure out stuff and make decisions and interpret events. The liberal left lives for a more idealistic, equal world that they're working towards when they make decisions and interpret events. And don't we need both? Don't you have to be grounded now to be thinking of the future? Well, of course you do. But let's bring it back to the world now. We were talking about world news when we started this. Uh, we will see these competing ideologies in future topics on how states politically organize themselves, 
how they operate economically, and issues which divide them socially. Region to region, we're going to look at this stuff. But for now, well, and forever, uh, but for now, I want you to apply this discussion of competing ideologies to the international news and events that we will be dealing with all semester long. You should now be starting to implicitly understand, without even me going into it, you should start to understand what it means when you read about a leftist guerrilla group in Colombia, uh, or what the rise of a right-wing political faction in Austria might be all about. See, you're starting to get it already without knowing the facts. That's what I want. Just as important though, all news sources have at least some bias one way or the other. And you need to recognize that in order to get at the heart of understanding the news they're reporting on. For example, uh, in China, the Chinese government owns and controls all of the news sources, all of them. And they have a vested interest in making themselves look good. Let's face it. So Chinese news sources are on the conservative right side of the spectrum, some far right, some just center right, and they're very pro-government. Stability, yes. They may present facts in news stories, but it will be done with a spin that makes the government look good. Uh, if there is an ethnic uprising or some sort of democratic revolution in China that threatens stability, that threatens the government, don't look for that ethnic group or democratic group to be portrayed very favorably or fairly in the Chinese press. It won't happen. And you need to understand that when you read that news stories. The opposite holds true on the other side of the spectrum too. A center-left news publication will always give news stories, not always, but mostly give news stories, uh, from the side of the peoples, from the oppressed peoples, let's say. Uh, and a far left uh, news source may go even a step further and spell out the worst aspects of some uh, government atrocity or that some big corporation has done all this nasty stuff. And they may even suggest a revolutionary way to overthrow them. So are you starting to get the picture? You do kind of need to understand where this stuff is coming from, what spin they're putting on it, what information they're giving you, and of course, what information they might not give you. In conclusion, if you really want to figure out what's happening on the planet, I suggest several things. One, use a variety of credible news sources from a variety of places. Get outside the United States as much as possible. I recommend that life in general, but for news especially. Uh, I have a variety of centrist, uh, balanced news sources that I use from around the planet. Listed here, also listed on the website, on the web resources. I like to get a variety of viewpoints from inside and outside the United States. I like to see things from different cultural standpoints and from different countries. So variety of news sources, number one. Two, identify their bias. You gotta know. Uh, you need to know if it's coming from a hard left or hard right or government owned or anti-government website to get what they're saying. This sounds difficult, but actually, as you read more and more, learn more and more, this will become easier. And here is a nice way to start. This awesome little news site, www.worldpress.org. They list all online newspapers and magazines from across the planet, organized by region and then by country. You click on the country, it'll tell you every newspaper that's online that you could tap into. And they take it a step further. They'll also identify the political bias in there. Bam, there you go, it's a great site. But even if you run across a site that does not identify itself, or you have not identified already, you should start to pick up clues by how things are reported, how things are worded, if they're further uh, to the left or further to the right. Now, three, triangulate the truth for any news event you're following. For any event, see what the United States press says about it. Uh, see what the Wall Street Journal says about an uprising in Afghanistan. But then go to a non-US site. See what the Chinese are saying or the Russians are saying about that uprising in Afghanistan. And then, and this is most important, go to an Afghan news source and see what the Afghan people are saying about that Afghan uprising. On top of that, layer it, okay? Get a left-wing news source and a right-wing news source from Afghanistan. Or pick a left-wing American paper and then a right-wing Chinese paper to try to balance out, get different viewpoints, triangulate 
what's being said, what can all of these opinions and news sources agree on, and that's how you figure out what's really going on. That is how you become the best informed kid on the block, the best equipped for a debate about anything, anytime, anywhere, and the best prepared for the world. Go get them, you globally informed citizens. And thanks to our friends on the left and the right for making sense of the ideological spectrum. Party on! Peace out. Word.